Five-year fixed mortgage rates have gone up by three quarters of a percent in the last month. That is a huge increase with over 200 emails from lenders in the last 30 days saying rates are increasing tonight. That's the subject line. We're seeing it almost on a daily basis and it is absolutely wild out there. So in today's video, I wanna discuss what this means for you with respect to qualifying because it's having an impact for the first time in the last couple of years on how much people qualify for. I'm gonna have a conversation about what it means with respect to variable versus fixed. And we're gonna talk about all things interest rates today and what you need to do to prepare in case they continue to keep going up. And I'm also going to talk about whether or not I think they're going to go up any further than what they already have. But before we get into it, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers, where when we hit 25,000 subscribers and we are getting oh so close, we're going to give away $5,000 to one lucky winner. But in order to win, you have to be subscribed and you have to pay attention because in one upcoming video, we're going to explain what you need to do to win in order to win that $5,000. So probably a good idea to turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any videos videos in the next couple of weeks. But let's get into it. Let's discuss rising interest rates and what's happening. Basically, this is the bond market putting a stop on the Canadian real estate market, or maybe, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how this actually affects the Canadian real estate market. But what is happening here is there's been a massive sell-off in the bond market in the last 30 days. And when bonds sell off, that means the yields go up because the prices of the bonds are lower and therefore the yields are a higher percentage of those bond prices. And that essentially means that we get these higher yields as the market basically expects that interest rates will go up over the next three, five, seven, ten years. So, you know, this is really, really an interesting time in the market because obviously nobody expected what is happening in Ukraine to happen. And that has led to upward pressure on oil prices. That has led to upward pressure on the stock market and inflation. We've had a 10 or 11 day rally here in the stock market that has led to the crash in the bond market. And that is causing the these bond market yields to go up. And basically what happens is bond market yields are used to determine pricing for five-year fixed mortgages or fixed rate mortgages. Basically what you do is you compare the yield of the comparable bond to the mortgage rate you're trying to determine. So a five-year mortgage is based off the five-year bond yield. And there's obviously a spread built in there. The spread is basically the profits for the bank. And as those bond yields increase, well, subsequently the fixed rate mortgages increase as well. And that's what's happening here. We've had about a 0.75% increase in the five-year bond yield, and that has led to about a 0.75% increase in the five-year fixed mortgage rates. So basically, at the end of February, which was about 30 days ago, we were at 2.99% for a five-year fixed mortgage. Today, we are at 3.79%. That's assuming that you're getting an insured mortgage, which is the cheapest way to get a fixed rate mortgage. So basically, a 0.8% interest rate increase. And this is keeping in mind that we're still at 1.7% for most five-year variable mortgages. So there's a 2% spread between a variable rate and a fixed rate right now, which means that if you're comparing variable versus fixed mortgages right now, you have eight interest rate increases where you will be saving money compared to a five-year fixed right now if you choose a variable. And of course, you're going to need another eight increases after that in order to cancel out all the savings in the amount of time it takes for interest rates to basically go up 2%. So, you know, this is a really interesting conversation because the five-year fixed rates as of today are basically making it impossible to choose a fixed rate mortgage given how much lower a variable rate mortgage is. And that is not even considering the fact that from a qualifying perspective as of right now you can qualify for significantly more about five to eight percent more in purchase price on a variable rate mortgage because those are still qualifying at the benchmark rate which is 5.25 percent if you're qualifying for a five-year fixed mortgage right now you're qualifying at basically 5.75 percent which means your buying power has gone down by about five to eight percent depending on who's doing the calculations and how they're doing them and so on and so forth so this is a really interesting time for mortgages because variables just keep getting more and more attractive as the five-year fixed rates go up. By the way, if you're in the market for a mortgage, whether it's a fixed or a variable, it has never been more important than right now, especially given where rates have gone. Because if you're getting a five-year fixed right now, there's probably going to be an opportunity to save some money somewhere in the future. So knowing what you're getting into is hugely important. And obviously, if you get a mortgage from Mortgage 360, we can make sure that you have everything you need to in order to take advantage of lower rates somewhere down the road in the future. But if you're going to do it on your own, if you aren't going to get our help, 
and you don't necessarily know what to look for, whether or not you can fully trust the person or the bank that you're getting your mortgage from, well, then our course, Secrets to Getting the Lowest Interest Rate, which you can get at rateseekers.ca, will give you everything that you need. It'll teach you how to get the lowest interest rate, but how to make sure that you also don't get a bunch of landmines and surprises by way of remove features or little tricks that lenders like to do in order to make it so it's impossible for you to leave. And that course is priced so cheaply that I can pretty much guarantee you're gonna get 10 to 50 times your money back just by knowing exactly what to say to your bank or your broker or whoever you are dealing with and knowing what the traps and the landmines are so that you can absolutely avoid them while getting the best mortgage with the best rate for you. So go to ratesecrets.ca if you wanna get that course. I guarantee you it's gonna save you money, it's gonna save you time, and it's gonna make the process of getting a mortgage that much easier. But what is leading to the five-year fixed rates going up? Well, I'm gonna jump you into my screen here. I'm gonna show you a few different articles here. I'm gonna start with this one. Stock surge is a bear market trap with curve inverted B of A warrant. So, what does this mean? This is an interesting headline. Not a great headline, but it's an interesting one. Um, first and foremost, we've seen 11% surge in stocks over the last two weeks. That's what's leading to the sell-off in bonds is this 11% surge in U.S. stocks. And basically what the Bank of America is saying is that in times of volatility, like where we've seen this major sell-off in the first month of the year, um, basically you start to see these bear market traps. So these run-ups in the stock values right before something even worse happens. And that's what they're suggesting in this article is that we're in this bear market trap sort of scenario, um, similar to the times like in 1931, 1956, 1962, 1966, 1969, 1974, 1981, 1987, 2002, and 2008. And at the same time, they're watching the yield curve and they're watching the yield curve for basically what's called an inversion. That's when short-term rates end up being higher than long-term rates. And that's usually a sign that there's a recession somewhere down the road. Now it can take up to a year for a yield curve inversion to basically play out into a recession, but this is something that is being watched closely. And as of today, the yield curve didn't quite invert, but it got very, very close. It's very, very flat. And I'm gonna see if I can find you real quick here, a chart for a yield curve and show you basically what they're looking at here. So this is the Canadian yield curve. And what you can see is there's two lines here. The blue line is the line from last year, and the black line is the line for this year. And when we talk about a yield curve inversion, and actually if you take a look up here, there actually is a slight inversion in this chart. You can see that the Canada seven-year government bond is slightly higher than the eight-year. That's an inversion. Now what they're looking for is they're looking for this two-year rate and this 10-year rate to basically invert. So if that two-year rate ends up being above the 10-year rate, that's an inversion and that's usually a sign that there's going to be some sort of a recession somewhere down the road. In fact, in almost every single recession, the yield curve has inverted six to 12 months prior to the actual recession happening. So they're watching this closely. And if I scroll up here a little bit and I show you the Canada bond yield right now, this is the one that the five-year fixed mortgage is based off of. And I give you basically one month's worth of data, what you can see is that Basically, since the beginning of the month, with the exception of this small period here on about the 4th, this bond market yield has consistently gone up over the last month, almost on a regular basis. With a little bit of relief here, we thought this was gonna cool out in the, on about the 23rd of March, but it's continued to go up. And if you compare this to the one month of the S&P 500, what you see is basically this matches what was going on with the stock market, or basically it inverts what happened with the stock market. So we saw there was this decline in the stock market around the 4th of March, that led to that sort of break in bond yields. But for the most part, what we've seen is this gradual increase in the stock market, this big rally here over the last two weeks. And that, for the most part, is what's causing the sell-off in the bond market. And that's what's causing five-year fixed rates to go up so substantially. Now, on top of the run-up in stocks, we've also seen U.S. consumer confidence unexpectedly rise, even though there's all this inflation. And we're also seeing the markets start to price in rate increases from the Bank of Canada and the Federal Reserve, and they're pricing them into the tune of a half a percent increase in the next month or so. And what that is basically saying is the markets are looking at this going, holy crap, we've got all this inflation, we've got all these things happening in the world economy. And basically what we need is we need higher interest rates to cool it all down. And that's where the market is standing right now. At this point in time, we just need interest rates to start going up in order to chill out everything that's happening in the economy. So what does that mean for your mortgage? If you're choosing a mortgage, if you've got a mortgage, 
you know, if you've got a variable rate. Well, right now we've got about 2% bandwidth where variable makes sense. So it, the picture for variable rate mortgages is actually getting better. It's starting to make the decision to choose one a lot easier. And as far as the outlook for five-year fixed rates, I think what we're seeing at the moment is probably a blip on the radar. I think we're probably going to see some strength in the bond market in the coming weeks or coming months as you know, things happen in the economy that are maybe unexpected. So we could see these five-year fixed rates come down, but the spread between the two rates is just so huge right now that a variable rate just makes a ton of sense. And obviously that spread is going to be decreased as the Bank of Canada and the Federal Reserve start to increase interest rates. But right now that spread is huge, making those variable rates really, really attractive. Now, because we've got this expectation that variable rates are going to go up, I would probably caution people away from variable rates that have payments that don't adjust, primarily because at the end of five years, if rates have gone up substantially, you're going to feel a lot of pain when the payments start to adjust. Uh, and likewise for five-year fixed mortgages, if you've got a five-year fixed mortgage from the last two years that's you know under 2% or under 3%, I'd be watching what's happening with interest rates and I would be adjusting your payments as interest rates start to exceed the rate that you have so that you're gradually getting used to having a higher payment so that in five years, if your interest rate is substantially higher, you're used to paying that. Now, you don't have to necessarily be paying an advance on your mortgage, but maybe you want to be taking that extra 25 or 50 or $100 and putting it aside into basically a mortgage fund that is there to subsidize your mortgage payment in the future if interest rates continue to go up. But I'd definitely be getting used to the idea of higher payments in some way, shape or form. Now, if you've got an adjustable rate mortgage, your payments are going to adjust automatically and you don't have to worry about this because you're going to be gradually feeling the difference in payments automatically, which I think is probably one of the better things for Canadians. I do wish we had a 30 or a 25 year option for a mortgage. We don't. So given that we don't have those long term options, feeling the adjustability in your payments, I think is probably a really good idea. And here's the big thing. If you're purchasing a property in the near future and you're relying on a five year fixed mortgage, pay close attention to your rate holds and your pre-approvals because it could very well be that your pre-approval amount has changed in the last month because of the fact that you have to qualify at a substantially higher interest rate right now. So talk to your bank, talk to your broker, make sure that you're covered from a pre-approval perspective for the amount that you were looking for previously because if you go and you write a condition-free offer and you've been affected by those changes in interest rates, well, you could end up finding yourself in a position where you don't qualify for the same amount of mortgage that you thought you did and you have to come up with some cash or you end up having to take a variable interest rate mortgage. So, you know, interesting things. Obviously, this is a big increase in interest rates. I fully expect that we're going to see some relief from this at some point. But again, I'm a pretty positive person when it comes to interest rates and have been all along. So maybe we won't see that relief, but make sure you're paying attention to what's happening with your pre-approvals. Make sure you're paying attention to what's happening with your mortgage, especially if you have a five-year fix and you think you're good. Get used to paying the higher interest rates now and that higher amount. And at the end of the day, you know, make sure that you're covering yourself so that if interest rates do continue to rise, you're ready for it, regardless of whether you have a variable, a fixed or adjustable rate mortgage. So if you found this video useful, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. Don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers and we'll see you on the very next one.